Right, folks, welcome to The Zone. Today we're discussing Manchester United 1, Newcastle 1. First of all, I wanted to say a thanks for everyone that tuned into the Formula 1 videos. They did really, really well. A few of you subscribed and I had loads and loads of positive comments. So I want to say thank you. I think it sums it up when the commentator used the phrase a buccaneering Joe Linton. Now, when do you hear that? This is a team that, yes, they're trying more because it's Man United, and that does piss me off, game raisers, but we should expect that. And there was nothing in this match. There was no dodgy decision. There was no weird refing. Um, we lost this match, frankly, because the players, man. Now, since I recorded my last video, we had Carrick as manager. Obviously, that's changed now. We've got Ranić as manager. And I didn't really do a video welcoming him or analysing anything because you can look at his past teams, his future and all of this stuff and come up with some speculation. But you don't know what a manager is actually going to do until you watch him. So the first few games, he wanted to press. Then he obviously wanted a bit more control in the game. And it's been going okay. But look, anyone that blames the manager, if there's someone on YouTube today that blames the manager, they're, they're, they're out of their mind. They, you, a, a manager can't come into a club and analyse, how many players do you think Man U have got on their books? 40? 50? He can't come in and analyse all of those players and pick who he wants to select to be in his team and just suddenly start winning every single game. It, it can't happen. You can fluke a few games, maybe. You can try a style and it might come off, but you're not going to be able to do a perfect style or analyse everybody. Like If he was to play three teams like of 11 different players and have a look at them and then be like, oh, I like this player, I like that player, even a one-game sample size isn't enough, and that would only give him three games for 33 players, right? He can't do anything, man, in, in that short space of time. So don't blame the manager. He substitutes. He brought on Cavani, who did better. Sancho, who did better. And I thought Matic came on, added some stability, and we looked a little bit better towards the end. So I, I'm, I'm not blaming him one single bit. What I want to blame today is just the players' mentality. That's all I want to speak about, just for five minutes. They haven't played for 16 games. Some of them have been bit part players. Some of them have been subs. Some of them have been on and off the pitch. Some of them haven't had much of a chance. And in those 16 days, that's uh, more than two weeks, right? So a bit of training in there, a bit of off time, three weeks. A lot of these players are on 200 plus thousand plus sponsorships and all the other stuff. They've probably made a million. That performance, each player, if you were to put a million pound on the head and say, can anybody do better for a million pound? I bet you they can, mate. So here are just, I'm just going to sprint through all of my notes. You let me know what you think in the comments below. So I'm just going to glance at my notes here. Number one, Maguire keeps stepping in. He keeps trying to lean in and get to the person and beat them because he's terrified that if he doesn't step in and win the ball instantly, he's going to get paced. He's going to get outpaced. So what happens? He, uh, he made one mistake, then got away with it. Then Varane made a mistake who you can sort of say, okay, he hasn't played in a while. And then when he, Varane makes that mistake, Maxim, uh, Maxim gets the ball. And again, Maguire dives in and then he sidesteps around him and slots it in. Rashford and Fred so unbelievably sloppy. Um, I don't see Rashford as a right winger at all. Um, the commentators annoy me. Like just to touch on this, the commentators were saying, "Oh, Ranić hasn't managed a team since 2019. Can he? Can he manage anymore?" Like, bro, it's it's like his what is it? Third game, fourth game? He hasn't managed from 2019. We're not talking 1919, mate. We're talking 2019. Of course, he can manage a football club, like. So there's a complete lack of forward passes from midfield at 22 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, you'll notice that two central midfielders dive in one after another and then they directly bypass them and have a shot clean through on goal by Shelby who almost scores. Um, and when you watch it back, yeah, there was a, a clear foul on Scott McTominay and previously there was a clear foul on Ronaldo not given, but that's not that's not why we lo we I was going to say that's not why we lost this game but to me this is a loss this is almost top 4 disappearing now title well disappearing and if you didn't know we're closer to relegation than we are top of the title so um 26 minutes my next point classic pissed off bruno goes for that 
90 yard solo sprint where he just presses the goalkeeper on his own and then when obviously it doesn't work out he goes oh, where is everyone bro why are you not press like irritate irritating me Maguire and Rashford this game and in general honestly shocking the 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 attitude of these players mate it's like they just can't be bothered M Maguire right <sighs> Maguire should not be captain of Man United. He's not a very good player. Is he okay? Yeah. Can he have good games? Yeah. But is he is he a Manchester United captain, central defender, best in the world? Because that's, I think people forget, that's the standards, man, you have. People will be like, oh, you can't expect that. No, Man United are pretty much meant to have world-class people in each position. That's what Man U is. We are the premier team, the top team, the biggest team, and yeah, we might not be winning as much as we used to, but you might say, oh, that, that expectation is ridiculous. It's not. Man United should have top quality players in its position. And Maguire is not a top quality centre-back. I don't care what people say. And Renal uh, Rashford, man, he thinks he's like a young Ronaldo. He's trying to do these chops and these flicks. And like when the ball spills out or he has to do a bit of running, he looks pissed off. It looks like Martial's rubbed off on him and he has this really irritating look where it's like he don't want to be on the pitch and he can't be asked to run. It's like he's above everyone. Like, bro. Um, I've got Callum Wilson was down, up and down injured for 11 minutes. Not much was done there. That was pretty much the end of the half. I'm not even going to speak about the goals. There are tons of chances. David Dea was really, really good. And you know me, I have a bit of an agenda when it comes to De Gea at the start of the year. I thought he'd, for a couple of years, he'd been really poor. And I think we could replace him. Having seen the state of our team and having seen De Gea this year perform, he's really stepped it up a level, which I think is all you can ask. I had problems with him. He stepped up a level. And look, I don't think he's a great sweeper. I think he invites pressure because he can't catch. And there's a load of other issues, but... He's not the problem, mate. He, he, he's been man of the match pretty much every match this season, which is just ridiculous. I've got Sancho came on and was better, but it's hard to interact with like Fred and it's hard to interact with a... Uh, I know he got brought on for Fred, but you know what I mean? Like your, your Scott McTominay's and your other lot. When they're, when they're not on the same wavelength as you, were, Sancho's going to struggle. But I thought he did all right. He created some chances for Cavani. He missed one, scored the other. Cavani couldn't Ronaldo. And basically everyone didn't really have many chances. I don't know what... I don't know what Bruno is in this team, to be completely honest. It's very strange, his position. And to be honest, I, I think he's been a bit pathetic recently. It's like when he signed for Man U, he was basically like second it reminds me of like Deli Alley when he was that second striker shadow striker and he would just pop up and score and that's okay but now he's not popping up and scoring now he's having to play as a midfielder he's like he's not really controlling the game he's not passing the ball from deep he's not creating he's just doing these irritating massively overhit balls and the mentality again I've written down here it's like one thing goes wrong um, and they don't dig in, they don't fight, they don't try and win the game. It's like they just go, oh, that thing's gone wrong. Now I'm going to moan for 90 minutes. Like you see a Liverpool, because you have to now compare teams to Liverpool and Man City because they are the standard. I'm a Man United fan, but you have to say it. When Liverpool go 1-0 down or something goes wrong, it fires them up and they go, you know what, we're going to fucking score. And then we're going to, once we've scored, we're going to go and win the game like United used to do. And now something goes wrong with Man U and I've written it down here they just cry 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 and then foul and then they get booked um, and you'll notice right after we scored we had a bit of a possession we had a couple chances and we scored that is then 25 minutes against literal relegation cannon fodder with all of our fully fit squad we should be winning that and you know what happens more moaning Maguire trotting it out from centre back so slow He's like, I don't think he understands the importance. It's almost like, hey, we're not losing anymore. Let's take it. It's like, bro, you're Man United. You're the captain of Man U. You're not drawing to Newcastle. Speed it up, mate. He's just like plodding around. He's like slowing the whole attack down from behind. Um, and after they, after we score, they set off, run through us. And you'll watch the footage back if you watch the footage back. I'd love to be able to show you and point these things out, but it's copyright. But <laughs> he steps in again. And then St. Max is like, okay, sidesteps him and then has another free shot. Probably should have scored. And I just thought Cavani had good movement, had some good chances. Again, Cavani wasn't fully ready, fully fit. Neither is Varane. Um, but when you're adding in Matic as like a pseudo centre-back to give some support and some playing from deep, 
look, you know, you're in a bit of trouble. And that's not to say that's Ragnik's fault. I actually think it was a pretty good sub. I thought it gave us some stability in defence and a bit more speed of attack. But that's going to wear off after a while. And it just shows our squad, man. Um, and just, we look more balanced with Matic on, but then just kind of petered out and we weren't really sure how to utilize it and there's a lot of things going on here um you've obviously got new systems new ideas and it's going to take ages to gel together people don't understand this don't blame the manager it's ridiculous it, you can't come in and say i want you to do all of these things and it's going to click it's like anything when you learn to practice some days you're going to be good at certain things and bad at others and then other days it's going to flip like you learn the guitar you might be like oh i'm going really well on these chords today then the next next time it might be completely different yeah the strumming might be going much better and they're sliding up and down but the actual holding of the chords and the moving of the chords might be like it it's it take you have to learn in stages right not everything clicks at once and some things click and then unclick and then the whole thing comes together but you have to wait for the whole thing to come together <clears throat> i really hope we let that happen and i really hope that we start kicking out some of these players that have shocking mentalities shocking it, it, it's unbelievable it's what it's like they think in their mind they are the manchester united that won everything so then when things go wrong and a few other people on the pitch do bad they're like wow how can he be doing that at man united we're man united it's like no at the moment we're a mid-table team and you're the guy that's meant to get us back to the top and you're not doing it actually so wake up the an unbelievable bunch i'm i'm hoping the pundits come out and actually name some names because let's be honest right if salah or i don't know eden hazard was doing poor they're like oh this guy's doing poor or oh this guy's doing great man united they say it generally they're like oh these players this bunch this group this no call them out they're shocking mate they're absolutely shocking um so one all that was the final result i want to say thanks to everyone that has recently joined the zone um like comment subscribe um we're trying to become a youtube partner so i think we need a thousand subscribers and a load of watch time so if you've enjoyed this content maybe have a flick through the library um follow me on twitter there'll be links in the description i always leave a little link as well in the, the description to the highlights of the game because i'm unable to show you due to copyright but i'll give you a link so where you can watch the game and then you can maybe watch the game and yeah uh watch these uh, analysis alongside it or something but yeah, absolutely irritating me waited 16 days to get to draw with a game raised in newcastle who we should have easily beaten even though the game raised and at this point you have to ask yourself are they game raising or are they just realizing uh, united are easy to attack united are easy to get at and they just give up when things go wrong so <laughs> It's unbelievable, man. Uh, it's absolutely unbelievable. They, what I'm, I tell you, what I'm, before I end the video, I tell you what I'm really interested in. I'm interested in hearing what Ranić has to say because all of our other previous managers are very much like, oh, the lads are great, very difficult period, they're busy with Christmas, or you know, they'll make some excuse for them. I'm hoping Ranić gives some tactical analysis and gives me something there. I'm like, ah, he actually knows what he's doing because these these players need a wake up call. Shocking. Thanks for an absolutely shite match, United.